Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is Linda Bennett, your spiritual counselor and psychic host for Metaphysically Speaking. Today, we're going to talk about the holiday blues, and we're going to catch up on some things that I didn't finish on the Samhain show and the Christmas show because there's never enough time. And Kristen, who has patiently been waiting for an answer on the spiritual energy that moves up and down or the chi or the key of the prana, I'm going to show you. I've got a fabulous poster here. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to hold it up yet. Fabulous poster that I'm going to hold up and give you a great visual. If you're on the radio, I'm sorry. But you know what your body looks like. You know the top of your head. You know down to your feet. And so you can visualize the double spirals of light flowing up and down continuously, up and down. What does this remind you of? Could it be the caduceus, which is the sign that medical people use? which is the staff, which represents the soul, and the male-female energy of God energizing the staff or the soul vibrating through the body. And finally, the wings, because that spirituality takes you to the heavens. That is the caduceus. It breaks my heart when I see, um, I think the ambulances, and I think chiropractic only uses one spiral. We're only getting one vibration of healing. So don't cut the other spiral out. People use the double spirals. I know the graphics might be a little more difficult, but get a better artist. Okay, now, I mentioned in the Christmas show several books. Obviously, I know what the Bible looks like. I use the, the New International Version. Um, and I love the shows on History, History 2, Discovery, The Learning Channel, um, whatever, uh, Nova, uh, that have archaeological expeditions, finding the Nag Hammadi scrolls, interpreting them, looking at the Shroud of Turin, talking about the birth of Jesus, etc. There is a wonderful book, and many years ago I had the privilege of lecturing at St. Pete College uh, down in St. Petersburg, interestingly enough, although there are many campuses around the area. And um, it was a theosophy and philosophy professor who invited me to lecture at the class. It was supposed to be for 45 minutes, and the class asked me to stay. It was their last class of the day, and they asked me to stay, and I was there for two hours talking about um, just everything we discussed on the Christmas, show, the Christmas show. You may be seeing this first. You may see the Christmas show second. It doesn't matter. Uh, talked about all kinds of things, including reincarnation, um, why some people live for a minute, why some people live to be 90, and amazing things. It was, a, it was a very great privilege. And I thought, boy, if the kids who made fun of me as being one of the brainies um, in high school uh, could see me now, to heck with them. Uh, that was quite an interesting day for me. And it was quite a privilege to lecture the kids. There was only one little brat in the class, and he was a Christian fundamentalist, and he believed every word in the Bible. And when I kept questioning him, which Bible? Which version? Which one are you talking about? Show me yours. I show you mine. I had mine right there in my briefcase. Uh, he got very unnerved and very upset and wanted me to leave. And the professor said, I think you should leave. Actually, you should stay because you could learn something. So the book I'm going to show for the TV people who are getting this on their computer or getting this on their television is called Jesus Lived in India. Now, in Europe and in Asia, it's called Jesus Died in India, which that professor told me because he had his copy at home. And when I showed this on the air, he said that sent him over the edge because he knew I was a real spiritual teacher. I'm also a real psychic. You can find us on uh, YouTube, Metaspeak. You type in metaspeak.com. You could type in metaphysically speaking if you want, but metaspeak.com. We pop up on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Blog Talk Radio, and I'm also a psychic. I do consultations on a limited basis. I'm semi-retired from that. I like teaching. Um, but if I feel I can really help you, you can send your email uh, request. And what you would do is you'd send me a picture of yourself, a recent one. I don't want your baby picture. Send me a picture of yourself. Send me a picture of anybody else you want to talk about a list of questions. The fee is $150 per hour. If you want to book two hours, it sends $300. $150 an hour, I don't do less. And the address is right there on the website. 
If you know you want a consultation, go ahead and send me the package after January. I'm not doing anything between now and January, but after January, and I'll be happy to help you with your problems, whether they're spiritual or personal problems or career problems or husband, wife, kid problems, it doesn't matter. Uh, some do, 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 do uh, spirits come from the other side, like Teresa Caputo, the Long Island Medium? Sometimes they do, oftentimes they do. I was telling my class recently that I've been dreaming about three spirits that have made a great impression on me. And one is on a boat, if you're watching, and this is your brother, you know who I'm talking about. He's dressed in 40s clothes, a really sharp looking guy, sharp clothes, and he was murdered. And so if you're the one whose brother this is, you'll remember that consultation. He has stayed with me all these years. He's not haunting me. He's just popping in to let me know he's watching out for me, which I think is really neat. So another, so I just showed you Jesus lived in India. In this book, you will see everything is heavily annotated. I will go to Jesus's tomb. You're going to say Jesus's tomb? Yes. When they said in the Bible, down here, I'll hold it very still, down here. When they said in the Bible that Jesus went to paradise, guess what the translation of paradise is? Mm, Kashmir. Now in Pakistan, previously in India, Kashmir is the translation of paradise. This is Jesus' tomb. It has been guarded for 2,000 years by the people in the area who are now Islamic who revere Jesus and Mother Mary, and Mary appears in the Quran more often than she does in the New Testament. Interesting. They were both revered as special prophets, special teachers, special healers. Now, this is Mary Magdalene's tomb. Now, at the time, what they did in the Middle East was cremate people and spread the ashes. So this is probably not the site with Mary's ashes, but it is a tomb in reverence to her, a place of memory. Mary Magdalene is buried in a tomb in Baum, B-A-U-M, I think it is, I don't think it's M-E, but it's B-A-U-M in France. And I had a student named Jacqueline years ago from France who had visited Mary Magdalene's burial site. And after her child, Sarah, grew up and went off on her own to do whatever her mission was, we don't know much about Sarah. There's not much spoken about her. And we don't know if Sarah, the child of Jesus and Magdalene, shock, they had children. They had to. It was the rule. Um, we don't know if she was the Black Madonna or if Magdalene was the Black Madonna. And what does it matter? Could have two different meanings. Number one, their skin was darker. Or number two, Black mean hidden, quiet, esoteric, occult, more spiritual, in the background, teaching special students. I think that is what it refers to, although it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to them either. We don't know where Sarah wound up, but she is revered in Poland and Russia, Romania, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, parts of Germany and in certain parts of the Middle East. And so is Magdalene. So Jesus lived in India, or Jesus died in India, if you're catching us in Europe or Asia. And another book that I talked about last time was The Case for Reincarnation, um, with a preface by the Dalai Lama. And I was just told by my super duper executive producer, Shawnee, that it is available on Amazon, but it's used. Well, who cares? This is fabulous information. Anybody who would give this book up needs their head examined because it's an important reference book, important um, points in here that you'll always want to hold on to. Now, Kristen asked me about, was that the Tibetan Book of the Dead she asked me about or the, or the Egyptian Book of the Dead? This is the Tibetan Book of the Dead. It's in soft cover. Doesn't really matter who produces it. Snow Lion Publications puts it out. And... This is the soul in Egyptian metaphysics and the Egyptian Book of the Dead. I also have a very large Egyptian Book of the Dead with a lot of photographs, wonderful photographs, but it's underneath my bed and I couldn't reach it because Princess Gracious Gracie knocked it under further under the bed and I couldn't get it. So there's only so much I can do before the show. I went to grab it and 
it wasn't there. I got the flashlight and way underneath the middle of the bed. Sorry. Okay. Kristen, I have to apologize because in the show we did for Samhain, where we talked about the chakras, we didn't finish talking about the spiritual energy or the prana or the key or the chi. So I answered your questions about the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And now I'm going to hold up a poster and you will see that up here in the head, is that Gracie? Yeah, you're going Gracie. I have circled the pituitary gland, which is right here. This is the third eye. Notice it's right above the eyebrow. Here's your eye. Here's your eyebrow, and this is the pituitary gland in line with the eyebrow. So when I was teaching you meditation on that show, I said, look right here, right here between the eyebrows. Not way up here, you go cross-eyed. Right here, which is the pituitary gland. Okay, that's the sixth chakra. Chakras are psychic spiritual energy points that relate to glands and organs in your body. Your heart chakra relates to your, guess, heart? Okay, throat chakra, right here, your throat, your ability to speak, your ability to internalize information and then be able to give it out again, to be able, the ability to speak the truth. And right, here's the pituitary gland, that's your third eye. You know, third eye jewelry is very trendy, okay, the mystic eye, keeping away evil, different cultures have it, okay, thought doesn't bother me, I don't like it, don't dislike it, doesn't matter to me. Um, and this is the pineal gland, okay, right here. Pituitary, pineal, notice, notice how close they are. Now, when you're meditating, first of all, the fact that you're alive means the double spirals of light are constantly flowing through your body. When I lead our meditation class, I reference the gigantic double spirals of light flowing down into the top of your head all the way through your body. And this light expands. It becomes a giant beam of light that you are now encased in. All the way spiral, 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 down to your feet, below your feet, and back up again, double spirals of light. And then I say, in every cell and every space between every cell, double spirals of light. Cleansing healing, blessing. Now, when your physical body dies, it's useless, back to the dust, cremate, bury, doesn't matter. The Buddhists have an interesting concept where they don't waste the body. I don't remember, I think it's the third day after it's been laid out that they bring the body to a cliff where the vultures are. They're buzzards. They chop up the body. I think they boil the body first. They chop it up and they give all of the remains to the birds, which take them up into the sky to their nesting areas. They consume them and then leaves the buzzard's body and it's back to the soil. So nothing gets wasted. No physical life is wasted as well as any spiritual life. I happen to like that idea. I think it's something we should consider, giving back to nature. I'm sorry, mortuary industry, but nobody needs a $10,000 box with satin lining. It's a rotted body. It's going to putrefy and liquefy. Think of that concept. Your great aunt Susie liquefying in a $10,000 box in a hole. Is that stupid or what? If you want to put, put a memorial stone out there, like for Mary Mother, great. I don't care. That's wonderful. Uh, if you think that she's going to be hanging around the gravesite, great. Your great aunt Susie is more likely to be in your living room watching television with you than she is hanging out at some cemetery. But, so, here's what happens. When you're meditating and you're focusing the third eye area and you do it just right and it's your day, the vibration takes place between the pituitary and the pineal gland. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, bum, 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 vibration. And it creates a harmonious, powerful, physical vibration in your forehead, in your whole head, 
which spreads through the top of your head, your out your ears, your throat, your neck, gown, cat, everywhere, and then vibrates through your body. You will hear a bumblebee sound. That's me getting greasy off my lap. A bumblebee sound. It's called baby ohm. And then you may hear the sound of ohm, or you may be meditating for 50 years and never hear it. It doesn't matter because it's still happening. Even if you don't know it's happening, it's happening. It's a physical vibration that is caused by your soul, that is caused by the God soul. That is your prana. It only leaves your body at the final resting when you drop your physical body and go up into the astral world. Now, here's an important issue. What does it do at night? Hang around, laying in bed, watching the ceiling? No, you're astral projecting. Who wants to hang around in bed looking at your pajamas? All this dust over there. Oh, the cat has spit up a hairball over there. No. Your soul has work to do at night. Now, there are times when your soul and your mind are totally shut down and resting and clearing out the computer. And then the soul leaves and goes off on its journey. You may go see if there's any chocolate cake left so they can have it in the morning. You may go see your neighbor. You may go see your neighbor's new pool. You may go see your neighbor's new puppy dog. You may fly over to Europe to visit ancient relatives. You may decide you're going to another planet. You may decide to visit some of your UFO buddies, the ambassadors that surround our planet. You may decide to go to another galaxy to maybe where you originated from. Doesn't matter. But you have important lessons to learn at night. That's why I say when you get up in the morning, you should shower and wash off the night and get ready for the day. And at night, never go to bed unshowered or unbathed. You want to wash off the day. Plus, you don't want to get into bed as a dirty body. No, that's disgusting. You want to get into your bed nice and clean with fresh pajamas if you wear them. And you want to be able to start your night journey clean and refreshed. So, your, part of your soul leaves your body, not all of it. It doesn't need to. There's a part that stays. So think of expanding chewing gum. And there's a little blob of you left back, a little blob of your soul left back in your body. And the rest of you goes traveling off, dashing around wherever you need to go, learning whatever you need to learn, um, getting information about what's happening tomorrow or maybe next week or next month or next year. That's why some of us who are psychic get premonitions about things to come. We don't know what they are. Maybe we weren't even told what they are, but we were told that something was going to happen. Many people before 9-11 had an uneasy feeling. I was one of them, but not for long. I didn't have it for long. The problem with me is I don't know 99% of the time where something's going to happen or what it's going to be, so I can't help it. So I've said to God and the angels in my prayers, will you knock it off already unless I can do something about it? What's the point of giving me this terrible feeling of trepidation if I can't help. So that's kind of subsided, which has been my request. And you can understand why. Now this is a Hindu chart. And for each of the glands and organs is a different name and a different vibration and a different meditation posture, a different color, a different symbol. It could be the antelope, it could be the elephant. I don't think there's a pussy cat on there because I don't think they like pussy cats. And I don't think you're gonna find a dog on there. There is a ram. Uh, there's another elephant, and so, and then there's the, the sign of Ohm, which is the three, and um, looks like a three right over here. And so, even if you don't know any of this, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is meditate. Just say Amen, or Om, or Om, Mani Padme Om, which is Father, Mother, God. Um, you can say... Um, Akuanoho, which is Hawaiian or Polynesian. You can say, I love you, God, I love you, whatever you want to say. There's a wonderful old tale, and I always cry when I say it, so I hope I don't cry now, where in India, the high priest got word that there were three old guys living on some island, and they never had any kind of spiritual instruction, and they were older than the hills, and could you please schlep out there on a boat and, uh, you know, help these clowns out? So the high priest said, oh, fine, just what I need now. I'll, 
a trip on a boat going somewhere to some island for three people. Or I will rise above the situation. I will do my duty as a high priest. So off they set on this big trip. And they get to the island and these three old men in beards and robes and wild hair and little, little shorts run out. And they say, oh, hello, who are you? We and God are one. And, and, and who are you? And uh, oh, what do you want to teach us? And they listened intently for weeks and weeks to everything that the high priest taught them. And they said, oh, thank you for coming. We're so grateful. We're all alone out here and we really have had no special instruction. And we just didn't really know what to do. Thank you so much for coming. And the priest says, don't worry about it. My pleasure. No worries. We got fresh water. We got some coconuts. Off we go. So the high priest is full of himself, and he's sitting there on the boat and talking to the captain, saying, can you believe we slept out there for those three clowns? I, I don't think they remembered a thing, we said. It was a complete waste of time. And then somebody up on the mast yells, there's a light. There's a light. What do you mean there's a light? We're in the middle of the ocean. There's no electricity. What, what, what are you talking about? There's a light. There's a light, and it's getting closer and closer. So everybody gets up and looks, and the light's bouncing around, the light's bouncing around, the light's bouncing around, and boom, the three old men appear on the deck. And they said, oh, high priest, we're so ashamed of ourselves. We're so disgusted with ourselves. We just, we're so, we're, we, we just have no words. We're so ashamed. We can't remember anything you taught us. All we can remember is the same thing we remembered before. We and God are one. Sent everybody over the edge. They said, oh, we need to study with you. Who are we? You bounced through the air. You bounced over the ocean. You bounced thousands of miles. And we thought we were teaching you something. And all you said is, we and God are one. Forget everything I taught you. You don't need to know a thing. The point being, you don't need to worry about what you say as long as it's love. You can say pussycat, pussycat, puppy dog, puppy dog. Father, mother, God, mother, father, God. God, 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 doesn't matter as long as your intent is light. That's what you need to remember. And when it's your final day on the planet and it's your moment to cross over, your soul leaves your body and your physical body dies. Whether you're in a hospital or in the woods, doesn't matter. Your physical body is dead. It ain't coming back. Was Jesus' body the same? It was healed. It was a physical body. The Jesus soul returned. The Yeshua soul returned. And he continued his mission throughout his lifetime. We don't know when he died. We do know through Jesus died in India that he was in Tibet. Because just like you sign into a hotel register, you sign in with certain lamas when you want to be taken around to look at the different caves and to study with certain lamas. And Yeshua of, Yad Na of, of, of uh, Nazareth was written in the, in the book. So we know from outsiders, not from the people who are busy telling the story, we know from outsiders that Jesus slept here, and he really did. And we know from outsiders that Jesus was in India because he was really seen. So therefore, when you lose your physical body, you give up this lifetime and you take a rest and you and your guardian angel take stock of what happened and did you complete all the ones in column A and column B and column C? Did you meet all the people you were supposed to? Did you have the proper relationships with them? And ladies, those of you who are lonely, and we're talking about holiday blues in a minute, just because someone comes knocking on the door doesn't mean you let him in just means he was knocking on the door. The karma was he knocked on the door. You have to decide if you let him in. And not all girls are good and not all boys are bad. So remember that. So when I talk about men wanting to kill and conquer, that's testosterone. It's not balanced with spirituality. And women who want to accommodate men just to get a boyfriend, that's undignified. It's ungodlike. If you can't find the right happy soulmate, maybe in this lifetime you're learning lessons on your own. Maybe you've had too many men doing things for you and you need to do things on your own. What's wrong with that? That's this lifetime. Learn the lessons well. If you learn the lessons well, taken care of. Chalk it off the list. Closer to the God force. Closer to not needing a physical body again. 
because it's astral lifetimes that you have to live. Now, I think we answered poor Kristen's questions. And Chris wants, and the crystals. She wants to know about crystals. Okay, I'll put this over here where Gracie can't get at it for the moment. I have crystals all over the place here. This is one of my favorites. This is an amethyst, and this is a little almost round ball. And this is from the inside of this sort of like piece here. This is a geode. Geodes can be round, they can be oval, they can be elongated. But this would grow right inside here, and it, they broke it off. They didn't break it because you can see th the uh, stone where it was part of the actual matrix, which is the brown part of the stone, the outward part of the stone. And you don't know what you have until you break it open. Same thing with jade. I have a friend whose family has been in the jade business for years and years and years, jade and pearl business, and she said, you buy the boulder with just a little chip and you can see the color and you don't know if that's the whole boulder or if it's just part of it or you've got nothing or you've got a beautiful stone in there. So, and they can be 25 feet wide, they can be 50, they can be 10. You never know what you're getting. Now, I looked up piezo and pyro in the dictionary today and guess what? They're not there. Now, maybe you can Google because piezoelectric is when you press and apply pressure to a sliver of quartz crystal. Quartz crystal. Quartz crystal. Quartz crystal, which I'll explain in a minute. Pyroelectric is when you apply fire, when you apply heat. Pyro from the word fire. Pyromaniac, sadly. There are people who like to start fires. But crystals have their own powerful energy on their own. If you go for a rock hunt, say you go to North Carolina or something, or you go to a crystal and gem store, or you go to a rock hound store on the side of the road as you're driving somewhere to the Carolinas, get attracted to crystals that you feel. Pick them up, hold them, walk around with them, if it's not yours, you don't have a feeling for it, put it down, it belongs to somebody else. If you have a feeling for it, but you can't place whether or not it's yours, take it anyway. Because maybe it's for your best friend or your husband or your wife or your daughter or your son or your cousin. It's for somebody you know. And if you're not quite sure about it, but something says, don't put me down, take it anyway. Because it'll be yours. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. It might take a year for it to wake up. When you get your crystals, bring them home, wash them off in soap and water, leave them on a windowsill for a 24-hour cycle, best in the full moon, and then start using them. Hold them for meditation. Put them wherever your meditation table is. Put them by your bedside, not near electricity. They don't like electricity, so don't put them next to your clock radio. Don't put them next to your, your TV. Now, I have a friend who puts them next to all of the microscopes at his vet center, and he constantly cleans them because they have to be recharged. So he's putting them there to neutralize all of the negative ion energy that's negative to people as opposed to positive uh, negative ions, which we need for our health and for well-being. That's ozone. So this is a double terminated, meaning it's terminated naturally on each side. It's not snapped off. And those I like best. But if you get a crystal that's been cut and polished and you love it and it feels great to you, then go ahead and get it. I don't want anybody else cutting and polishing my crystals. I want them just as they came out of the ground. Now for television people, I'm holding up what you can see is a translucent gray crystal. And this is known as real smoky quartz, not cooked, which they radiate, kill them. And it's got these little striations, these little gold slivers. And that's called rutile. Rutile is a metal and it energizes the crystal. So not only does it only have its own crystal energy, but now it's got an extra vitamin zap in there. There's no crystal that's bad. There's no crystal that's gonna harm you unless you slice your finger. Crystals are not bad. Um, the new age phenomena craze of crystals has died out because a lot of those people weren't really spiritual to begin with. They were just shoppers, common goers, just running from one thing to the next, flitting here, flitting there. And the older they get, the more scared they are of dying because they really don't know anything about the soul. That itself will cause you holiday blues. 
So crystals are a special vibration that's here on the planet as a special blessing. You can have gigantic ones, and they don't have to be gorgeous. They just have to have a good feeling about them. Not every person is gorgeous or handsome. Not every cat is beautiful. I've had prettier cats than you know who right over here, Princess Gracious Gracie. Yes, I have. She's asleep. I can say that. Oh, now she woke up. <laughs> the minute I say something about her, she wakes up. You are so psychic. All the pictures of your cats are on my screen. Oh, all the pictures. Oh, you know, we don't have Smarty, but the only picture I have. Oh, I do have a big picture of him. I could let you have that. Smarty was my guardian angel when I got when I was 12. I was a battered child. My mother used to like to try to come in and kill me, and Smarty would wake me up if I had fallen asleep. I was always a night person. My father would see me eyes wide open at 6 o'clock in the morning. 7 o'clock, they were closed. But I'm not, a, I'm not a, a nighttime sleeper. And if my mother was coming down the hall, creeping down the hall to wake me up and I had fallen asleep, Smarty would tap me on the face like this and wake me up. He was... You know, angels can take various forms. And when you're sitting there thinking, oh, woe is me, I don't have a great Christmas, understand that angels are here to help us. And angels can take animal form, whether it's your dog or whether it's your cat. They can take special form to help you through tragedies in your life. Sometimes they only last a few months. Sometimes they last years. I had my Smarty for 15 years. He died about four months after the vet told me he was in perfect health. But sadly, in those days, vets didn't know very much about cat medicine. In fact, my current vet, Dr. Joel Murphy of Animal and Bird Medical Center of Palm Harbor, who is on the list at the end of the show that my fabulous executive producer and videographer put together, um, he said that in vet school, and he used to teach in vet school as well, that they learned about cats for about a half an hour. They were told they get kidney problems and they die and they're a pain in the neck to try to feed. That's what they were told. We know so much more and a really good thing to get would be cat fancy or dog fancy. By the way, holiday blues, a lot of it stems from the expectation of gifts. I happen to love books and magazines. All my pussycat people get cat fancy magazine. They're not sponsoring this, they should, but they're not. All my dog people Dog Fancy Magazine. My fabulous videographer here has a dog and a cat. And when he bought the dog home, the cat took a look at him and went whack. And the dog knew his place, and they've been buddies ever since. We have fabulous pictures. You know, you should put a picture of, of them up there, cuddling together. This cat and this big, what was he, 75 pounds? 75 pound dog. And you've seen on the Animal Channel, where they have dogs with geese as friends, where they have a cheetah with a dog friend, where the bear had his pussycat friend. Animals get along well sometimes, just like people get along well sometimes. And part of the holiday blues is understanding that. Just because somebody is your mother, your brother, your sister, your aunt, doesn't mean they love you. It's sad. And you know what? Doesn't mean you love them either. Maybe they're really crummy people. Maybe they're alcoholics. Maybe they're junkies. Maybe they puff away and you don't smoke. You don't need to punish yourself because it's Christmas or Thanksgiving or Halloween or Easter or the 4th of July. And I don't care if you're outside, you can still smell the smoke. So therefore, part of the holiday blues that you're getting stems from the fact that you're realizing and you're facing the reality that not everybody you're related to is fabulous. And you know what? That's great. As long as you understand that and you set the rules for your life, you make your own rules. You decide if you're going to let somebody make you miserable. When I read Dear Abby or the other gal in there, I can't think of her name, Hacks, I think, H-A-X, um, I'm so sad when I read people who are writing in and saying, now Christmas is coming, do I have to go to my mother-in-law? She's always insulted me for years. Do I have to go to my father's? He's always made my life miserable. No, unless you want to be miserable. If you think Christmas or Thanksgiving are festivals of misery, smarten up. It's why the cruise lines are booked. Take a cruise, go somewhere else, stay home, tell them you're leaving town. Or say, you know what, mom, dad, mother-in-law, 
I'm really tired of your abuse. I'm a grown up. I'm taking charge of my life. My husband wants to go over for an hour. That's no problem. You will not see me. You will not see the kids. Abusive behavior is not acceptable. As Dr. Phil says, love doesn't hurt. Get that straight. If you get that straight, 90% of your holiday blues will be gone. Love doesn't hurt. You don't hurt people you love. You're not mean, you're not mas nasty, you don't make cutting remarks, you don't make little snide comments. You're loving, you're open, you accept people for who they are if you can live with their standards. If you can't live with their standards, that's okay, don't. Live with your own standards. Find people you have something in common with. I don't know who it was, and nobody seems to know who created the quote, as you go through life, you gather about you family members, very few of whom are related to you by blood. And here's the Gracie, and she wants up. And don't forget you're catching us on Metaphysically Speaking or metaspeak.com. Yeah, just pose for the camera. There you go. Ed, everybody enjoy how beautiful you are, and I'll explain this star in a minute. Oh, that's got a string. I was asking for trouble. Be diverted over here. You're going to find me on metaspeak.com, on, on Block Talk Radio, on Facebook, on YouTube, and we have archived many of the shows so you can catch up. And if you're a brand new viewer, spirituality makes sense to everyone since we're all part of the same spirit. And we're part of the same energy as every planet, every galaxy. Oh, there she goes. Meeting, meeting Santa Claus. Gracie, what if you go talk to over here? Why don't you go over there? <laughs> you know, I had a cat years ago named Miss Cuddles, and we did a show from a pet store that refused to sell cats and dogs. And I was congratulating them, and it was where I got my supplies. There we go. Executive producer chores, diverting pussy cat off table. Thank you, executive producer Shawnee. Um, and at the very closing credits, Cuddles, who had been sort of you know, looking around, sitting bored, looking around, looked directly into the camera and winked with one eye. Now, at the end of the show, and they played back to make sure they recorded everything, I heard my director and his co-director scream. I thought, oh my God, what's happened? They're out in the truck outside. Linda, 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 you've got to come see this. I said, what wrong? What happened? I pulled off my microphone. They were racing outside. And they said, you're not going to believe Cuddles winked. I said, what do you mean Cuddles winked? They said, look, at the very closing credits, look what she did. She winked. She winked right. Sure enough, turn around, winked. You can't get a cat to do that. She was a natural star, which is why she insisted upon being called Miss Cuddles. If your holiday blues is caused because you have a sick pussycat or puppy dog, I know what that's all about. My little smarty, who was my little guardian angel, um, I woke up Christmas Eve morning and he hadn't gone to his pan, raced him to the nearest vet. Of course, everybody closed those days, caught the vet, kidney problems, undiagnosed by the vet in Connecticut, and I lost him January 3rd. Pinky got sick over Christmas for two Christmases. Cuddles, thank God, died two weeks before her birthday, which was Halloween. And um, I lost my angel last January 2nd. She was sick over Christmas. So every Christmas I'm thinking, oh, well, who's going to die next? Um, it's very sad when you lose your pussycat or puppy dog. And people with kids who don't have cats or dogs, don't have pets, please do me a favor. Don't tell someone who's lost their cat or dog, oh, it's just a cat or dog, get another one. Because right then I'd like to punch you right in the head. And I'm nonviolent. Because to us, our cats and dogs are our babies. Their souls are just as important. I think their souls are more important. You know why? They don't have religions. They're not killing each other over their God. They're not starting wars. They don't want to take over your town. They're not burning down forests. They're not putting up plantations instead of wetlands. They're not building and paving over the wetlands, which are necessary for flood control. That's the people in New Jersey and Rockaway and Lower Manhattan, which is built on fill. So um, I think pussycats and puppy dogs and horses and cows and elephants are far more important than humans because humans are destructive. 
We start wars. We blow each other up for God. God doesn't want your bombs. God doesn't want your bullets. God wants you to be kind and gentle and loving. That's another reason for the holiday blues because it's not about picking out the best shirt. It's not about getting a nighty. It's not about buying a diamond ring. It's about celebrating the calmness and the peace that the great beings who have come to this planet have tried to create. Buddha was the enlightened one. When they said, are you God? He said, no, I'm awake. I'm awake to the universe. I'm awake to the truth. I'm awake to the light. I'm awake to why we're here. We don't know much about many female saints and special ones except for Mary Magdalene and Mary Mother because men don't talk about them. They'd like to forget that um, Florence Nightingale was the originator of nursing and that the male doctors didn't even know enough to wash their hands or clean the sewers that they had the patients dying next to. Yeah, they had open sewage with patients stacked up alongside. Florence Nightingale, a very wealthy family, didn't want her to go around with the sick soldiers, created modern nursing. Clara Barton founded the Red Cross. Bet you didn't know those two things. So women played a very important part in our history. Men have just chosen not to write about it. Um, they think that as Mozart was going crazy from syphilis and from alcoholism, that his wife is the one who finished his music. Mm -hmm. Women know how to write music. We know how to play instruments. So therefore, that's also part of the holiday blues because women somehow subconsciously know that they're being disregarded by life, by history. And that's because they've allowed it to happen. They've allowed the bullies in the male society to take over. And the men who were kind and loving wanted to be part of the guys, and they didn't fight them. If only somebody had fought them. If only somebody had said, no, we're all part of the soul energy. You are not better than he is. I am not better than you are. We'd have a different planet. We wouldn't have all these religions. We wouldn't have wars. We'd have meetings. We'd have organizations that help the poor. I'm really sick and tired of the teabaggers. I am fed up to the eyeballs with them. They're selfish and self-centered and greedy. Strangely, many come from slave states. Do you know why they hate the president? Because a slave is president. They don't consider people of color to be equal. Oh, they'll go to the concerts and buy tickets and buy the discs, or the CDs, or rather, but they don't want them in the White House because they're inferior. Guess who's inferior? Not the president, the person who thinks he's inferior. We all bleed red blood, people. We're all part of the same God force. Doesn't matter which continent you've arrived from. And by the way, the only people that are true Americans are the Indians you gave smallpox to and shot and killed and stabbed and shoved on reservations. Yeah, those are the, those are the Americans. Not you, not me. We're visitors to a continent we've taken over and brought death all the way down from Alaska, all the way down through the tip of Bolivia and Brazil and Chile. An entire hemisphere, Nor northern, southern hemisphere, entire half of the world wiped out the indigenous people because they wanted to be there. They wanted gold. They wanted territory. They wanted land. They wanted. This is what all criminals do. They say, I want, I need it, I want. That's not God's way. Sharing is God's way. Caring is God's way. That's what causes holiday blues also. Not getting what you think you deserve. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go in your bedroom or wherever there's a, a mirror or your bathroom, close the door, turn on the light, stare at it, and say, what have I done to deserve what it is that I want? How have I worked for it? And if you can honestly say that you work for it but you still don't have it, say, what is my life without it? The answer is probably not bad. Do you have a job? Are you getting paid? Is it honorable? Are you working for gangsters? 
working for gangsters, <laughs> I'd run. But if you were earning a decent living in an honorable way, that's really all that's necessary because when you die, God's not going to say, why didn't you make the vice presidency? Why weren't you head of the, the, the garbage company? Why didn't you have the best taco stand? You think that's what God cares about and the archangels care about? Do you honestly think that's what they care about? No. They think about what have you done for others? How have you learned your lessons? What kind of a person are you? What kind of a soul are you? Who did you help? Who were you kind to? So if you think you have the holiday blues, ask yourself those questions. And if you like who you see in that mirror, you're doing fine. You're doing absolutely fine. Are you holding it metaphysicallyspeaking.com? Metaspeak.com. Metaspeak.com. I'm going to tell you how this is written. Can I have that, please? Oh, my God. Give it to me. <laughs> now, this one always yells at me about it using a pink pen on pink paper. This, I don't know if you can tell, is <laughs> rainbow colored paper in pink, in the dark. You notice I tried green first, it didn't work. Didn't work. Okay. So she's holding up this thing, and I'm, I can't read it. I'm not a magician. I don't have x-ray vision, You're which psychic. I don't think would have helped anyway. <laughs> You're psychic. I just wanted to show you what I have to go through. All these trials and tribulations Thanks. on the sideline. Thank you, executive uh, producer. We are on Facebook.com. We're on YouTube. Type in Metaspeak.com. I do psychic consultations if I feel I can help you. I do them all around the world. I will do them at 2 o'clock in the morning, but not after. I do them starting at 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I will do them hither and thither, depending upon who gets scheduled. Um, it's just as effective over the phone as it is in person. I like to see people. I don't need to read body language, all you naysayers and you members of the, the what is that, an obnoxious organization of people who claim there's no such thing as psychics and there's no such thing as God. Take a hike. Don't bother me. Don't waste my time. Um, we all have psychic energy. We all have psychic ability. It's your soul's mind. You are a soul, so therefore you have psychic ability. Your animals know more than you do. And they're not interested in taking over the world. Another reason for 10 more minutes, I have so much to say. Do you know that I need 10 hours? I don't need 10 minutes. Another reason is the astrology. Now you say, oh, roll your eyes. She doesn't talk about it much, but what a bore. Well, you're not just your sun sign. You're every single aspect in your chart. And if you want your chart done properly, go to either 1-800-MAPPING I think that's Neil Mickelson's service. I'm not sure. 1-800-MAPPING. Tell them Linda sent you. They'll probably go, I've been doing this for like 20 years with those people. They should know who I am by now. And they will give them your time. You need your time. Now, a nurse said this to me who was an OBGYN nurse. And my Aunt Marie had said it, who had done OBGYN a lot in her life too. She said, the time on your birth certificate is probably not exactly right. It's probably, your time of birth is probably earlier. Because we don't sit down after every birth and do paperwork because there are too many babies being born. Unless you're in a hospital and it's slow. And then you can look up at the clock, which if that happens, it's great. But otherwise, it's approximately maybe 10 minutes earlier than you think it is. So you could have two charts done. One for, say, 10 or 15 minutes earlier than the time on your birth certificate. And one is the time on your birth certificate. And take it to a good astrologer. Not some dingbat who took, took three courses, but a good astrologer who's been doing this for years, and they will rectify it for you, and they will interpret it for you. Because you're everything, what your chart is, is a road map to your life. It doesn't tell you whether or not you should get out of bed that day. It doesn't tell you to wear green, blue, red, or pink. It tells you what your lessons in life are and how you're likely to handle them, the assets and the liabilities. Well, I tell you that as a psychic. And I can see by looking at your picture or hearing the sound of your voice or both about different things going on in your life. If you're not a believer, don't bother me. Don't waste my time. I, I've been doing this too many years. My whole life, as a matter of fact, I was the one who used to settle disputes amongst my little friends in, in nursery school. Yeah. So therefore, I don't need to prove anything to anybody. But we all have psychic ability. That thing you feel, that hunch, that gut feeling, that annoying feeling, there's something going on, you don't know what it is. Pay attention. That's your soul trying to warn you. 
whether it's make a right instead of a left, go straight instead of turning, whatever it is. Don't go to the door, go to the door, don't answer the phone, answer the phone, whatever it is. Pay attention, listen, intuitively, when you start thinking it to death, you're going to be wrong. When you trust that gut feeling, that's your soul talking to you. Your soul always talks to you. Your soul is who you are. So you're talking to yourself. God's talking to you. So therefore, when you go against that and you make bad decisions, then you get depressed. And you think, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so unworthy. I'm so ugly. I'm so dumb, blah, blah, blah. Well, you did a dumb thing, but that doesn't mean you're a dummy. Well, if you keep doing the same dumb thing all over again, I got my uh, little hesitation here. But nevertheless, you learn your lessons and you move through life. Also, too many people put too much emphasis on the holidays. But here are the people who are going to be depressed over Halloween and Thanksgiving. Those of us who were Scorpio, some Libras will be depressed over Halloween because it's just ending the Libra energy and it's Scorpio energy now. And 40 days before your birth energy sets in, and 40 days before your rising or your ascended, which is at the 9 o'clock position on your chart, 12, 6, 3, 9, the 9 o'clock position on your chart when it's properly cast, you will have a downslide. Think of having two alarm clocks in your life. One, the minute you're born, it goes tick, 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 slows down before you're born, before your birthday. And then you get recharged at your birth energy. And the other is your rising. And the older you get, when you get to be 35 or 40, you're responding more to your rising sign. And so you've got two clocks, one for your birthday and the other for your rising. So you've got two clocks, tick, 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 tick. And they're usually at different times of the year. Or sometimes you're, say, a um, uh, cancer sun sign with a cancer rising. Well, it's doubly difficult, but you get it cleared out for the whole year, which is great. People who are depressed at Christmas are Scorpio, because we're so intense. I'm a Scorpio rising. We're so intense, things can be overwhelming. And we have such profound feelings and such intense and driven and trying to make everything right feelings. Nothing can be perfect. It's planet Earth. It's a mid-level planet at this point. How can we make things perfect? I used to want to sit down dinner for everybody at Christmas Eve. I gave up because people arrived late and I was tired of dinner being ruined. So the next step was, screw you, we're eating now. Then I did a casserole. Bake ziti. No worries. Show up when you want. We're eating now. Make life simple. Don't make sure every mashed potato has to be perfect, because it doesn't. Life isn't perfect. Capricorn, sadly, is the most depressive of all the signs. Capricorn is very grounded. It's an earth sign, but it's also extremely depressive. And Aquarius, which is a sign after that, is an air sign, but it's not quite as balanced to say Gemini or Libra. You can have crazy ideas. They can be writers, they can be directors, or they can be crazy because they never settle anything. They make up their minds, they change it. They make up their minds, they change it. They make up their minds, they change it until everybody around them is crazy. Just wants to smother them and push them in a, in a, in a closet and slam the door and say, what Aquarian? I don't know any Aquarians. So therefore, they're depressed because you're running out of steam. You're running out of energy. So if you're a Capricorn or a Scorpio or an Aquarian, you're going to be depressed over holidays. Scorpios are more chipper at Christmas because we come through, hopefully we've done things right, and we're chipper at Christmas. But Capricorns are morose and depressive. So give Capricorns something to be happy about. Give them a happy book. Give them a happy magazine subscription. Get them a funny thing that they enjoy. Maybe they like crossword puzzles. Get them a book of crossword puzzles. Get things that are going to keep them busy instead of wallowing around and thinking about themselves. So you've got the astrology of the time. You've got expectations for holidays of everything being perfect, like Martha Stewart, plus Martha Stewart. I'm so thrilled she's got the staff at home to do the cooking and the cleaning for her so that she doesn't have to do the scrubbing and all the preparation, and her house looks great at the holidays. I don't have that. I don't think most of you do either. Do the best you can. If people see dust, maybe they won't even see it. Suppose they wear glasses and they can't see it anyway. Don't knock yourself out. 
prepare your house in the way you're comfortable with, have a meal you're comfortable with, and by the way, if somebody says I'm vegetarian, as we are, we're vegetarians. It's not vegetable soup if it's made with chicken broth. It's chicken broth soup. It has to be vegetarian. And we'll do another show on vegetarianism, which is the way we're supposed to be eating. And I know you're looking at this, and this is a dodecahedron. If you look at it with the three points, you will see that it is a six-pointed star. And if you look at it so the point is facing you, it is a five-pointed star. And one of my students for our Christmas presents made these. Bless her heart. It's on the web, Do Decahedron. This is one of the building blocks of the universe. One of the building blocks in your body and in minerals. So therefore, we will take this up at another show. But I thought, let's answer the question because it's hanging out here like, you know, like a little flag waving and you don't know what it is. Do Decahedron. If you have the holiday blues, then think about what makes you happy. What makes the people around you happy? And how you can accommodate them without harming yourself. You don't need to make yourself miserable to have a happy holiday. I now order pizza and have salad. It's so much easier. People who want salad have salad. People who want pizza have pizza. Everybody's happy. And we have little pastries afterwards. People who want pastries, I also have ice cream. I also have tea, coffee, decaf, whatever. Simple, no big expectations. You're better off giving the gift of a magazine or a book or to children the gift of taking them to the movies. They'll never forget that experience. Taking them to the soda shop, having an experience with them. Take them to the zoo. Take them to the mall to buy a pair of jeans. Give people something that they can appreciate you, that they'll remember you by. Then you won't have any holiday blues. Don't feel sorry for you. Think of yourself as a spark of the divine, as we all are. And if you just open up your hearts and minds to God's universal truth, you will know that God and the angels are always with you. Namaste, which means I bow to the God who's in you.